Joined by Florence. Hi, Chris. Hello to you, Florence. Uh, starting off uh, uh, a big day in Italy yesterday, and not in a good way, a new coalition government sworn in and a shooting incident at the same time. That's right. That shooting incident is on the front page of the Wall Street Journal today. You can see uh, the suspect being arrested there. Two uh, police officers were wounded uh, in that incident. A lot of papers are wondering just who this man is and why he would do something so crazy. Uh, if we look at Il Sole 24 Ore, uh, they point out that he's 49 years old. His name is Luigi Preti from southern Italy. Uh, now, prosecutor says that he has uh, confessed to targeting politicians, uh, and they say that his motive was that he was angry having uh, lost his job. And in fact, a lot of papers are pointing out that this incident really marks uh, widespread uh, social desperation. But uh, authorities were quick to point out that he was acting as a lone wolf, though this article points out that they are investigating whether he had some sort of links with the mafia. And the day was supposed to be one of celebration, of course. That's right. Uh, the new prime minister was uh, sworn in yesterday, Enrico Letta, uh, from the uh, Democratic Party. Uh, now, he's seen in this article in the Corriere de, de, de la Sera as a ticket out of the deadlock that the country has been in for the past two months uh, since elections. Now, he is at the head of a grand coalition that will have members from the two rivals from that election, so uh, Silvia Berlusconi's People of Freedom Party and, of course, uh, Pierluigi Bersani's center-left party. This article points out that this is the first step of pacification. Uh, it's a, a turning point in Italian politics, and a lot of people are hoping that this is a return to reality now, there's a cartoon in Corriera de la Sera, though, that points out that, well, Letta has his work cut out for him. If round one was between uh, Bersani and Berlusconi, and you see them in the corners there, well, you see a Letta getting into the ring for round two, and it's gonna be, he's going to have to put up a, a delicate fight with the people of uh, Freedom Party. Okay, moving on next to a subject which is rarely out of the press, Syria. Syria, and especially how the U.S. is going to react to reports from Israel, France, and Britain that Bashar al-Assad is using chemical weapons against his people. Uh, there's a cartoon in the International Herald Tribune that points out the dilemma that Obama is facing, because he said that if uh, Bashar al-Assad was mm. using chemical weapons, well, this was a red line that could lead to U.S. intervention. But you see Bashar al-Assad crossing that line, uh, and you see there's several other red lines there. Uh, well, this one is really the one you shouldn't cross, and really, really don't cross this one. But uh, the Wall Street Journal points out that what Bashar al-Assad is doing here is essentially calling Obama's bluff. Uh, and it says that this could have very dangerous consequences in their editorial today. They, they point out that U.S. presidents who are exposed as bluffers uh, tend to have their bluff called again and again. And it points out that this could be dangerous if other countries decide to do the same thing, especially Iran and with their nuclear agenda. Meanwhile, uh, a country, the U.S., did, of course, uh, intervene in and uh, a spike in violence once again in Iraq. That's right. A lot of papers are focusing on that today. There's an article in uh, The Independent that points out that the Iraqi army is, in fact, struggling to keep hold of the northern half of the country. Lots of uh, soldiers, according to this article, are deserting as the army faces escalating hostility from Sunni Arabs and Kurds. Uh, meanwhile, politicians in the Shia-led uh, government in Iraq are uh, reportedly starting to talk about partitioning the country. So this article describes this very explosive situation that's, well, based a lot on religion, but also on uh, controlling the country's resources. Uh, and it's really gotten especially violent in the last couple of months. And the prime minister, uh, Nouri al-Maliki, has drawn criticism for not doing enough to uh, calm the situation down. This is a cartoon in Gulf News that actually calls him a divisive force. Uh, and you see, a, well, a Saul representing him cutting the country up into little pieces. Finally, uh, let's have a look in The Guardian and a bizarre row between Greece and Qatar. That's right. It's a strange spat that both countries are trying to play down. Uh, and, well, The Guardian describes it as a clash of cultures because what's at the heart of this is two nude statues. Now, these statues were meant to be at the centerpiece of an exhibit in Qatar entitled Olympic Games Past and Present. But last month, when the Greece's culture minister went to this exhibit, he saw that these statues were, had actually been covered up. Their private parts had been covered up with cloth because organizers feared that female spectators would be offended. But Greece was actually offended and said, if you don't show these statues the way they normally are, well, we're taking them back, which they did. Uh, and, well, this article points out that Greece is somewhat in a pickle because it's eager to, uh, well, be on Qatar's good side, of course, oil-rich nation. But it's unclear why Qatar got so upset about this because there were other nude statues in that exhibit. Florence, that's all we have time for. Thanks very much for that roundup of the international press. Do stay with us.